In recent years, Conference USA has become something of a turnstile for Division I college conferences. Due to movement above it and around it, they were perhaps the biggest loser in terms of membership, dropping at one point from 14 members to just five, and being forced to add a few FCS and independent teams just to get by. This is in spite of their relatively good athletic performance. Teams like UTSA and UAB have excelled in football recently, while FAU's recent Final Four run will play in perpetuity in Boca Raton for years to come. But there's one problem with those three schools. They're all in the American Conference now, not CUSA. While Judy McLeod's stint as conference commissioner will surely be proclaimed as one of the worst in recent memory, up there with Larry Scott of the Pac-12, it's hard to say that the writing hasn't been on the wall for the CUSA for quite some time, where the McLeod really could have done much of anything to prevent the loss of CUSA luster over time. While they had established enough leverage a few years ago to be the Group of Five conference to attract teams, their short history is full of examples of schools using them as a testing ground before they jump to greener pastures. This is in spite of the competitiveness of the conference in general. The only question with CUSA is where they go from here, and whether or not any further direction is possible. But to further understand the position the CUSA is in today, we have to go back to the beginning, to see where it all started. Note that while I could focus on every team that has ever been a member of this conference for any sport, I'd have to spend time on all 41 members. Because of this, I won't be noting the affiliate moves for teams in sports like rowing or bowling, and there won't be much depth as to the accomplishments of the other teams, rather just their moves. Regardless, their history is an interesting one, and may provide the blueprint for what group of five teams may look to avoid in the future. This is the history of Conference USA. To understand the Conference USA, we actually have to head back in time to long before the conference was created to look at the two other conferences that created it upon a merger, the Great Midwest and Metro Conferences. Let's start with the Metro. I've already done a little bit of history on the Metro from my video on the Big East and how it was sort of a prototype for what the Big East would later try to emulate, so I'll try to speed through their history as coherently as I can. Founded in 1975 with members Cincinnati, Georgia Tech, Louisville, Memphis State, St. Louis, and Tulane, while later featuring teams like Florida State in 1976 as well as South Carolina later down the line, the Metro was a conference that featured some heavy hitters in basketball while their members' football teams stayed largely independent. After departures like Georgia Tech, St. Louis, and FSU, the conference was able to grab teams like Virginia Tech and former Sun Belt powers like USF, Charlotte, and VCU, but their lack of a football league and otherwise overwhelming success of their basketball programs proved to not be enough of a draw by 1995. The Great Midwest, similarly enough, was another non-football league facing some tough margins. Short-lived from 1990 to 1995, the conference featured largely Midwestern teams as opposed to the largely Southern demographics of the Metro. It even started with two former Metro members, Cincinnati and Memphis, joined by UAB, Marquette, St. Louis, and DePaul in 1990, with Dayton joining in 1993. It had later become clear to athletic directors at schools from both conferences that their situations were similar enough to warrant a merger. Talks in 1995 were swift and impactful, resulting in a near total merger between the two entities. Most of the teams from both conferences elected to join, save for Dayton, VCU, and Virginia Tech, who went elsewhere. While a functional conference, the result was an uneven number of teams. Luckily, by 1995, the fallout from the Big Eight's merger with the Southwest left Houston without a home. The Cougars fell right into the conference's lap, providing them with a foothold in one of the most populous cities in America once the Southwest Conference finally collapsed in 1996. One of the prime reasons for a merger was the ease in which a football league could be created. Whereas the previous two leagues forced their members to play football as independents, the amount of current teams who did play Division I FBS football as of 1996, a year after the rest of league play was established, was large enough to create a football league. The first football season in 1996 featured members Cincinnati, Louisville, Southern Miss, Memphis, Tulane, and Houston. The lack of a football team for DePaul, Charlotte, Marquette, and St. Louis, as well as a 1A football program for USF or UAB, proved not to be too detrimental to the league's ability to perform as either a football league or for other sports. As of 2023, none of these teams are still members of Conference USA, but more on that later. 1997 and 1998 saw the additions of East Carolina and Army as football-only members to help flesh out the league more. UAB elevated its programs to full membership by raising its football program to CUSA in 1999, leaving South Florida as the last football-playing member of the conference whose football program was not a member of CUSA. The turn of the millennium saw more change for Conference USA. 
TCU, having been a member of the WAC, joined as a full member in 2001 to accentuate East Carolina moving to full membership. A couple years later, in 2003, USF made the move as well. But something was brewing outside the walls of Conference USA. Teams like Cincinnati and Louisville had displayed enough momentum to move up in the ranks, and a conference in their vicinity one rung up on the ladder was taking heavy losses. Reeling after losing programs to the ACC, the Big East was in do-or-die mode on expansion. Conference USA programs were in the right spot to add while remaining somewhat regional. Cincinnati, Louisville, and South Florida, as well as non-football DePaul and Marquette, all announced their moves to the Big East, a future antagonist, effective in 2005. At the same time, St. Louis and Charlotte, perhaps under strain from their non-football membership and concern over a landing spot should the conference dissolve, moved their teams to the Atlantic 10, while TCU began its move to the more prestigious Mountain West, and Army dropped their affiliate football membership to return to independence. It was a massive blow to the conference, and one that could very well have killed it, losing 9 of 15 members in one year. The conference had to act quickly and precisely to avoid any panic ejections from the remaining six schools all of which were full members. They pivoted largely west, grabbing SMU, Tulsa, Rice, and UTEP from the WAC as full members, as well as Marshall and Central Florida to the east. Interestingly enough, Florida International joined the conference as a soccer affiliate, but remained in the Sun Belt for quite some time for other sports. This kicked off the second era of Conference USA sports. This is Conference USA. Home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. Every year, the competition within these walls gets tougher. The rivalries get more intense. It pushes these young men and women to become smarter athletes and stronger students. Pride and respect run deep in our house. Welcome to Conference USA. Competition lives here. But once again, an old enemy resurfaced in 2013. Tulane and East Carolina both announced their intentions to join the Big East, soon to split into the American, in 2012. SMU, Houston, and Memphis, who had made a push for a men's basketball national championship under John Calipari in 2008, would as well, alongside UCF. They would join in 2013. To respond strongly, the CUSA looked towards the Sun Belt, adding Middle Tennessee State and Florida Atlantic to get back to the same numbers. Also added were Louisiana Tech, North Texas, UTSA, and Old Dominion, who initially joined as a partial member before moving up to full membership a year later. Florida International also moved up to full membership, and Charlotte returned to the conference as a partial member until their football team moved up to full membership in 2015. They returned to this well following the news of Tulsa's departure in 2014 to grab Middle Tennessee's rival in Western Kentucky. Then, an unforeseen issue. The Board of Regents for the state of Alabama decided to shutter the UAB football program in 2014. I'm going to try to cover this as non-biased as possible, but understand that Paul Bryant Jr., as a member of the board, was a prominent voice in shutting down UAB's football program. Many Blazer fans believe, and still believe, that the decision to shut down the program had more to do with Bryant's biases against the G5 Alabama program than any sort of money issues encountered by the Board of Regents. And that may be true, or it may not be. The simple facts are this. In late 2014, Blazer Athletics announced that football, among some other sports, was being shut down to save money. They viewed through a study done by the Board of Regents that the running costs of a football program were increasing exponentially. As a member of CUSA from 1999 through 2014, the Blazers were 72 and 116, with a record in the past five seasons of 18 and 42. This created a major issue with the CUSA, because conference bylaws in 2014 required that to retain membership in the conference, a school must have had a participating football team. Without one, UAB's membership was in jeopardy, and the CUSA would have to look for a replacement. Unless they didn't have to. UAB rapidly applied for re-evaluation in 2015, giving the conference an excuse to hold on to them for the time being. After a few delays, the university and athletic department decided to bring back Blazer football in 2017. Under Bill Clark, the Blazer Phoenix came back strong and won a conference championship in 2018, just their second season back, before winning another in 2020. While the league was still figuring out the UAB situation, they brought in a face that would preside over the toughest era of the conference by far. When the College Football Playoff Foundation was being created to set up a new system of determining FBS champions, CUSA Commissioner Britton Banowski left to join it. 
In the interim, the CUSA elevated Executive Judy McLeod to the position, one she still holds today. Her boat would rock little in the first five years of her tenure, as she oversaw the league's first national championship when Marshall won a soccer national championship in 2020. But the familiar wolves were still at the door. Following the 2021 realignment boom, the CUSA was in a bad position considering TV contracts and recent league success. The American needed to replace prominent programs like Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF, and their eyes were once again focused on the CUSA. They targeted Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, Rice, UAB, and UTSA to replace those leaving programs. At the same time, the seeming weakness of the CUSA and the improving image of the Sun Belt allowed the Sun Belt to recruit Old Dominion, Marshall, and Southern Miss. The Sun Belt teams left in 2022, and the American teams left in 2023. But now down nine teams and left with just five, the CUSA was in deep trouble, and almost more. There was a lot of smoke towards Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, both deciding to leave for the MAC around this same time. While this move didn't end up coming to fruition, it would have further diminished the league to just three members from 14, and in all likelihood, would have officially dissolved it. They needed new members if they wanted to survive as a conference. But with no members willing to join from other conferences, given the image of the CUSA was now that of a wounded duck, they had to get creative. They extended invites to FBS independents New Mexico State and Liberty. New Mexico State would join UTEP as rivals in the Mountain Time Zone, and Liberty had recently been a program on the up following some good football seasons. They also looked towards the FCS ranks, looking to bring up Sam Houston State from the WAC and Jacksonville State from the Atlantic Sun. The addition of these members in 2023 would leave the conference with nine members, enough for a conference schedule, but still considerably small. They fixed this the following year by inviting FCS Kennesaw State in Georgia to round out their roster of 10 teams. They will join for the 2024 athletic season. While it's apparent that the CUSA is still committed to surviving, they are doing so at a significantly less prestigious clip than they had before. Unfortunately, this is a trend for them, with former teams like Louisville and UCF now in power conferences. They're the revolving door of the group of five, and it looks like their future will return to more FCS and independent schools in order to replenish their ranks. But that should do nothing to diminish what the conference has achieved during their short history. Each of its programs have built themselves and developed in positive directions since their admissions into the conference. Despite treading water, the conference is also still here, and is providing space for FCS standouts like Sam Houston State and Kennesaw State to prove that they belong with the rest of the league. They've survived before, they can survive again. I'm going to split this video into two parts, this part focusing on the history, and the next part, an open discussion on where the conference could go from here. Stay tuned for that video sometime soon. As always, thanks for watching, be civil in the comments, and I'll see you next time.